part two of this series, I showed you how to create a circular vignette that I wanted to use as part of a base map. We could do something much cooler with it, which will come in handy, especially if we want to pair that vignette with other base maps. To do that, we need to turn the vignette into its own base map. Doing that's gonna give us a lot more flexibility for how we can combine this layer with other web maps. Hey folks, welcome back to the Carter Redux channel. My name is Tommy. This is part three of what has now become a four part series for the shader relief base map. Now there's a bit of a trick to get this vignette to work as a standalone base map. Let me show you how. Now let's jump right back into this layout where I created the vignette last time. We're gonna change it up a little bit though. I'm gonna add another rectangle element. And for that, I'm just gonna use a solid black fill. We'll just bring that underneath the vignette. All right, let's just double check the position. Yep, position still looks great. That looks good. One to 72,000, that looks good as well. So I'll turn that black background on and we'll turn all of our map layers off. This vignette's now ready to export. That's it, that's all we needed to modify for this. We don't need to support transparency, so we can turn that off and we can dial this back to 24-bit true color because we're gonna have a background color set. Click export and just wait for that to finish. There we go. We'll head over to our QC map and let's add that vignette. Now, don't freak out about this black spot in the middle. Um, the only thing we do need to address though is by default, you may see it flip to minimum and maximum. Change that back to none for stretch type and you'll get your nice feathered edge back. Now, additionally, we wanna pair this with a blend mode and we're gonna use the screen blend mode because that's actually gonna take white pixels and keep them opaque and it's gonna take black pixels and make them transparent, which is exactly what we wanna have happening here. Now, if we bring that on top of our reference layer, you can actually see this really cool masking effect, feathering all on the edge. But you'll notice that we quickly fall off the edge of our vignette. So we gotta backfill that somehow. So let's head over to this map. And you know what, we're gonna bring that vignette in again. And let's fix that one more time. And just for the purposes of showing you, we're gonna bring that blend mode back on. Typically when I'm designing a base map, one of the most important aspects to take into account is how's it gonna be used? And you know what they say about first impressions. Well, that applies to maps as well. So how are users gonna be introduced to the map? What's that initial interaction look like? Some of them are gonna have a very specific scale that we zoom to or a specific extent, or maybe it's data-driven or user-driven. But either way, there's typically a target scale that we're looking for for our application. And for this, we're gonna say 72K is our magic number. Next, before we do the next step, we wanna make sure that we have our scales set. And we're gonna check this box right over here. And what this is gonna do is, it's going to make sure that we snap to those exact scales. It's almost gonna be like we're um, driving a web map. Now, what I typically like to do is zoom out two, three, four times on my map. You know what, let's just zoom all the way out to one to one million. Make sure we got a nice broad region that we're gonna cover with this. And then I'll add a polygon layer and I'll change this to white. So this polygon just basically covers that entire area. We'll roll back that blend mode so we can see. Yep, that's it. So the next thing that we need to do is we're gonna change that background color from gray to no color. And while we're in here, let's just double check to make sure that we are in the right coordinate reference system for our base map, and this is Web Mercator, so that's good. This is now ready to cache. So let's head over to the Manage Tile Cache Geo Processing tool. We've got our cache name set, we've got the input map, and we're gonna specify a different tiling scheme this time. This time we're gonna use the JPEG 75. Now again, typically with a map like this, we would say maybe mix 75 because we want the outlying areas to not get masked by the layer. But that in this case, that's exactly what we're trying to accomplish with this vignette layer. We wanna hide all that stuff underneath the map. We're gonna use JPEG 75, that's gonna work well. We just gotta figure out what scale to generate cache to. So let's say we zoom to source resolution that takes us to one to 23,000, which is close to 36K. So let's just call it 36K zoom back out. So over here in Manage Tile Cache, we're going to deselect all the scales that are larger than 36,000. So I'll just click space. And then for our area of interest, that vignette AOI is gonna be doing double duty. Not only is it gonna be that masking feature covering all that stuff, all the background, 
We're also going to use it as the geometry to constrain where we generate the cache. We'll check out our parallel processing factor. Uh, I've got a bunch of other stuff running on my computer right now that I don't want to affect. So I'll dial back the, uh, the parallel processing factor a little bit from 100% to 75%. This all looks good. And so we'll kick that off. That should take about a minute. So while that runs, let's head over to the cache directory. Just keep an eye on this. See when we get some layers, some bundles cooked. There we go. So let's head over to the QC map just to get a sneak peek at our cache data set while it's still processing. So we can browse to our cache. And you know what? Let's turn off our vignette layer over here. And let's add that to the map. Zoom out. There we go. Nice big swath of, of white pixels around our area. Just to double check, make sure that is working properly. That looks great. Delightful. So once that's done caching, that layer will be ready for turning into a tile package. Now we need to turn into a tile package because this is going to live in ArcGIS Online. So we got to get it up there somehow and a tile package is the best way to do that. So we'll use the export tile cache geoprocessing tool to accomplish that. Only this time we're going to use all the scales. We'll browse to that cache data set. There we go. Pick an output location and a name. And this time we're also going to skip the area of interest. And we do that well because it's really fast. If you specify an area of interest, it's going to um, clip tiles and to just that to just that constrained extent. Right? When you don't use an, uh, an area of interest polygon or an area of interest input, it is going to just copy all the cache data set into the tile package and zip it up. So it's a much faster process. And because I want all the tiles for this map layer, this just works. Okay, so let's double check that TPKX and make sure it looks the way that we expect. So we'll browse to that, add it to our map. That looks really good. And once again, blend mode, use screen, perfect. The vignette's holding up. As we zoom in, that looks great. Now for the sake of uh, time, I've already uploaded that tile package to ArcGIS Online. So let's take a look at that real quick. So here's our hosted tile layer, already deployed, ready to go. Now, because we need blend modes to basically hide that black background, that means uh, there's some special considerations we need to take into account when we're making our web maps. Specifically, which map viewer can we use for this? And in this case, we need to use the new map viewer because it is based on the new JavaScript API, the 4.x JavaScript API, which does support blend modes. Unfortunately, the classic map viewer, the old one, that uses the 3.x JavaScript API, which doesn't support blend mode, so it's not going to render correctly. So let's head over to the new map viewer and we'll go down to the base map group. And I want to use the terrain with labels for this example. All right, I'll go into the base map group, I'll add a layer. In this case, I'm going to grab both the shader relief and my vignette. You can see it there now. Let's do a couple of things first. Let's zoom to our Bryce Canyon. Then we're going to bring our vignette into the reference layers. And we're going to bring it to the top of all the other reference layers in that group. And then also, like we've been doing all along here, we're going to set the blending mode for that layer. So we'll click on screen. Now, it's looking exactly like we were seeing back over in Pro. We've got our shader relief in the base layer, and we've got our vignette in the reference layer. Now, there are two different flavors of base maps. We've got reference layers and base layers. Base layers draw underneath everything, and reference layers draw on top of everything. So it's kind of like a base map sandwich. This also applies to any layers that you add to the map. So if somebody else is using your base map, and if they add a layer to their map, it's actually going to be sandwiched between your reference layers and your base layers. You can have multiple reference layers, as you can see here. And why we want the vignette on top? Well, we don't want this happening. We actually want that vignette to mask the text that's in there. All right, so this is actually holding up really well. I can zoom out. 
I've got everything completely masked. I'm maintaining focus on my specific area of interest. This is great. I love this. So there we have it. A sweet vignette base map that we can use to mask all our layers in any web map. I'll, uh, I'll have a link to that web map in the description below if, uh, if you want to take that one for a test drive. Now, if it's not obvious, I really do love this effect. As a matter of fact, I love it so much, I used it in a big project just a little while ago. Um, and honestly, it was the perfect finishing touch for rounding out the overall aesthetic of that base map project. And it turns out it was also the customer's favorite element of the base map. So it was a hit. But what do you think? Is this something that you would use in your map projects? Let me know in the comments below. That's going to do it for now, folks. Stay tuned for part four, where we turn up the complexity even more and spice up our base maps with yet another flavor of vignettes. Until then, folks, take care. I'll see you soon.